All right, what's up, YouTube? Uh, today I wanted to talk about a game that's not even Super Smash Bros. Melee. Guilty or Strive is a game that's popping off right now. A lot of people are getting into it. Void just top eight at a stack tournament, proving that Smashes can get it done in the realm of 2D fighters. Um, and yeah, for a long time, you know, I think I had this misconception because I'm a melee player. Right? I think melee players, we have this thing where we love the ability to like freestyle and to feel like, you know, the stuff we do in melee is like organic or whatever. And we feel like, man, 2D fighters, don't you have to spend a bunch of time in training mode, learn all this frame data nonsense? Isn't it kind of, you know, doesn't it feel like work? And I'm here to hold your hand and help you get set up. It is a very young game. I would say already there's a lot of emergent complexity. I'm going to tell you a couple things about the game and I'm going to help you get started so you don't feel like you're uh, in over your head. All right, so here we have Guilty Gear Strive. So you're gonna get, you're gonna get the game. That's the first step. And I would say that the first question that you might have is, what system do I even want to get this game on? And that is a ultimately a good question because the game is available right now on PS4, PS5, and there's crossplay between those two consoles, and there's PC. But I would say it feels right now like I think in. Certainly in Japan, I think more people play on console. I think in NA, I would say more more people in English-speaking countries probably play on PC right now. In other words, Steam. Basically, uh, ultimately, I think the big major tournaments will probably be running console. But of course, that's not something you have to be super concerned with because um, all, all you really need is the ability to play the game online and have fun with people. So I would say you could really get both. PC does have mods. Someone in my chat brought up that PC has some really go dope graphical mods. There's a, I've seen a mod where that makes uh, uh, Ramlethal look like Asuka from Evangelion uh, with, the, with the hat from Rebuild of Evangelion shit, which was kind of cool. So if that's the kind of thing that appeals to you, PC. But I think ultimately it comes down to your own convenience. Um, if you just have a really strong PC and you spend a lot of time on your PC, I would get the PC version. And uh, otherwise you can't go wrong with the console version. If you don't have a really powerful PC or something like that, you're worried about that sort of thing. Just get console, don't worry about it. What I would basically say, and I think from here, once you actually get the game, I think there are two schools of thought. There are the people that want to jump into matches immediately, and then there are people that want to spend a little bit of time in training mode. I'm kind of the latter, but I will say that for a very long time, I was somebody who deterred myself from playing 2D fighters because I wanted to spend too much time in training mode. So what I would actually say is resist the urge to feel like you got to master everything. I know how it is. You know, you're a Smash player. You feel like you've got a lot of experience in Melee. You feel like you've got sick command of your character in Melee. And you're intimidated having to start from the beginning. I get it. I've been there. But I do think ultimately you want to get into some real matches as soon as possible. And just fucking mash on those goddamn buttons. I think Strive also has a pretty good, um, if you go into Dojo and you go into, there's a, there's a really simple tutorial. And then there's this mode called Mission, which will basically have you do really basic things. Like it'll be like, you know, here's how you can, um, here's how you can use basic mechanics. Like if it was Melee, it would be like, here's how you can do a wave dash. Of course, Melee will never have anything like this, but it would be stuff like that. It's like, here's how you do a Roman cancel to extend a combo. What I did, however, what I did, again, because I like to just know the most tiniest amount of what I'm doing. The first thing I did, and I think this is, uh, this is something that you can either do after you've played like a little bit, or you could do this at the very beginning if that makes you more comfortable, is I learned like one very simple combo. And the combos in this game are not that complicated. And I'm going to prove to you that it's that simple by learning a combo right now with the character I don't use. So I'm like, YouTube soul combos, soul basic combos, right? Uploaded by Sejam. You already know you're in good hands. Sejam, wonderful content creator, wonderful commentator, a man I look up to. So basically these are just combos that are like two, two normal moves and like a special move or something like that, right? Punch, kick, slash, heavy slash, and dust are the five buttons in the game. You can map them however you want. Me, personally, I use the old school Guilty Gear layout. So I have punch on the bottom left, kick in the bottom, in the top left, slash one over from that, heavy slash one over from that, and dust below that. But that's the old school layout. I would say that probably more people these days are just doing like something similar to how this layout on the bottom left is, or uh, they would put heavy slash at the bottom left and then dust next to that. 
I'm just going to go through and learn my special moves real quick. So it's like, okay, cool. Gun flame. And I love, by the way, the Guilty Gear Strive does this. It actually shows an animation of the move. You see that? Here's Bandit Bringer. This one looks dope. A lunging attack with great horizontal movement. We're going to learn how to combo into this move. So again, it showed bringing the stick from down to forward. You can actually see in the bottom left corner. You see my stick there? See that? See that? See that? And there it is. So that's how you perform the move. Looks like we got... Uh, we're going to do the, the very first one. Again, 5K, 6S, 236K. What do these, what do these numbers mean? So again... This is going to be numpad notation. And the way you can basically dis discern what these mysterious numbers mean. And it's super simple. You're going to want to look on the right side of your keyboard. And the numbers literally map to the direction. So one means down and left. Two means down. Three means down and right. Four means to the left. Five means you're just not touching the stick at all. And so on and so forth. So when you see that 5K, that means... Your stick is just in the middle, and then you're pressing the K button, which is K. And that looks like this. And likewise, 6S means you're going to hold forward, because you see it's one. Look at my stick in the bottom left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So 5K 6S would mean like that. 5K... 5k and then 6s and you'll notice that if I hit the, the slash button too late or too early it doesn't combo if you hit it too late what basically happens what this is is a cancel and what this basically means is with cancels if you let the move finish you won't be able to interrupt it with another move so you see I'm, if I let this move actually finish and then I hit the slash button, then my slash doesn't come out. But if I hit it fast enough, like that, then he doesn't even finish extending his leg practically. He just about finishes extending his leg and then he's already doing the slash move. So you just want to get this timing down. You want to input the next move in the sequence while the first move is basically still hitting them. And there's your simple combo. And again, that was 5K, 6S. And I would literally at this point, having messed around a little in trading mode, I've learned some of my special moves. I've learned that I can do this. This gun, this, uh, sorry, bandit revolver and lunge forward. And I might have messed around. I've, you know, I've learned that I have a projectile. I've got this move, which I can use as an anti-air, right? And at this point, I would literally just start playing matches. This would be the point where I would say, like, I've got enough of a feel for my character that I'm not, like, literally looking down at my stick, right? And I, at this point, I would already say, resist the urge to go through this whole goddamn, you know, list of, um, of combos and, and learn all of them. Because I think a lot of people, you know, they feel like they need to be perfectionists. This is definitely how I am. I definitely default to, like, I want to know what the hell I'm doing when it comes to every single aspect of the game so that I don't make a fool of myself, you know, or whatever, right? But I would say at this point, fight that urge and go on to online and just play matches for, like, a good 30, 60 minutes. And I think this is, for Smashers getting into fighting games, I think this is the, like, number one thing I want to emphasize because I actually think this is very common that people get so hung up and like, I gotta learn all this, dude, look at all these combos. Sorry about that, click back by accident. I gotta learn all these combos, dude, there's too many of them. And I think certainly as you, as you start to play, what you'll notice is you'll get into situations that will encourage you to practice certain things. You'll notice that, man, sometimes my opponent does a big move with a lot of lag and I'm right in front of them like maybe maybe I, they're in the corner and they they they're in a lot of lag and I can get a big juicy punish but I don't know the optimal punish for that spot and so you know this video is dope obviously because it actually shows you and you can see the combo itself and you come in and you're like oh damn look at all this and you're like damn like wow that was way more damage than I get in the spot I will learn how to learn how to do this and then I would go in trading mode and I'd actually practice the combo but I would say like play some fucking matches. Get the get the feeling of like 
just like no, like know which spots you even want answers to, and then you use training mode to like find those answers. Let's talk about what sticks to use right now, because I think this is a question that comes up a lot. So I use a fight stick. Um, the reason, however, that I use a fight stick is not because I think you need a fight stick, and this is something that I think people have a lot of misconceptions with. I think they're just fucking cool. I would say that if you've never used a fight stick in your life, these days, there are literally fight stick players that say they wish they played pad because they think pad is more optimal. And the reason for that is because your hand doesn't have to travel as far to go from one direction to the other, right? So I would say literally if all you have sitting around is like a PlayStation controller, just use a PlayStation controller. Literally, you don't need a fight stick. Now, However, if you want a fight stick because you just think that they're dope, and I do think they're cool. I think they're very satisfying. They got a nice little, listen, listen to this, listen to this. Right? Oh, it sounds so good, dude. But I'm currently using a Quanba Obsidian. Very cool controller. Um, As you can see, it's got a nice bit of heft to it, so it's not sliding around my lap. The other one that I would recommend really strongly is the Razor Panthera. Um, and I'll show you guys what that looks like as well. I've heard that the Razor Panthera is actually even better for, like, modding. It's really easy to open up. I also used to use the Hori Real Arcade Pro, the HRAP 4. Um, I mean, this is another solid stick for sure. I used this one for many years. But, yeah, I pretty much just pick one of those. I would honestly just say, whichever one you think looks coolest, just get that one. Yeah, this is the hitbox. Any f much fewer buttons, I would say, than, like, the Smash Box and the Frame 1 and, you know, the box, right, in Melee or in Smash because you don't need... Uh, a million different angles or directions or whatever for your character. You just need left down upright and your buttons. But again, if all you have sitting around is a PlayStation pad, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this. Some of the greatest fighting gamers use a pad. Sonic Fox is a pad player. He won the first big Guilty Gear Strive tournament, right? Levo. And uh, you're, you're totally fine. I think people feel like they're getting into this great big endeavor. And they're like, oh man, I gotta have all the conditions perfect to get into this new game. I gotta get the perfect controller. I gotta practice all these combos and learn all this crazy stuff. And I would say just jump in, dude. Just jump in. That's the number one thing I wanna take away. Play, get your hands dirty, get some experience. And then when you have questions about like, well, what do I do in this situation? What's a better combo I can do in the corner? Then come back, you know, look at your YouTube footage or whatever. But you gotta, you gotta get that real... That real experience, and I think that's really important for people. Things I guess you should know about Guilty Gear Strive. Things that might not come as naturally, like if you've watched fighting games, but you're kind of wondering what's up with this particular game. Uh, one thing you you will want to know is this game has a, a concept called wall breaks. So this is, uh, let's see, one of the longer combos would be like something like this. Oh, that doesn't break the wall. So right here, this state right here, um, in this game, if you do enough damage in the corner, the wall basically kind of goes into this broken state like this. They call it wall splat or wall break. And if I hit him one more time with literally any move, the wall's going to break. I don't main this character. And so the wall literally breaks and he goes flying. And you kind of reset to neutral if you break the wall with like a super move. Because there's like super moves in this game and you can learn learn these and they're dope. Then you get a little bit of frame advantage. But otherwise, you basically just reset to neutral. Other things you're going to need to know, right? You've got your meter at the bottom of the screen. You can use those to do supers. So again, uh, you can go in your command list and be like, oh, okay. So your super is going to be at the bottom. Tyrant Rave, is gonna, you're going to do a half circle from forward to back. And then, whoop. So that's this move. Again, you can watch my stick, right? And uh, if you basically have meter, it uses half of your meter to do one of these supers. As you can see, it's gone from full to half, right? And uh, you can also use it to do a thing called Roman cancels, which lets you kind of cancel your moves. And then, as you can see, it kind of puts your opponent in this floaty state where you can do whatever you want to them. You know, so you can do some kind of cool combos with that. And the only other thing that you need to know besides your life is uh, the burst gauge at the top. As you can see, it's flashing blue right below your life. And if you're getting comboed, then you're just going to want to press uh, two buttons, any two buttons at the same time, as long as one of them is the dust button, which as you can see is represented by the, the letter D down below. And this is going to break you out of a combo. 
So as they're combo, you can do this anytime you're getting combo, and it's just going to pop you out of the combo, right? And uh, those are pretty much the only systems in the game. This game doesn't have a whole bunch of crazy stuff all over the screen besides those two things. Those are two Guilty Gear classics. It's just super meter and your burst to get you out of combos. Um, and that's kind of about it. That's kind of about it. Like, uh, everything else you can kind of pick up as you go along, I would say. Um, but yeah, this game has a lot of depth. I would say a lot of people are playing this game right now. Uh, let me know below in the comment section what character you play, what characters you're interested in. If you, uh, are wondering, like, some, some people to watch, you know, Leffen's playing this game right now. He's obviously a very established fighting gamer at this point. Played a really, really solid Dragon Ball Fighters game. Um, and he's playing, I believe, Soul and... I think he's playing Soul right now, right? You got Void, he's playing Chip. I'm playing Ramlethal right now, although I'm very interested in some other characters like Eno. And, um, I know more, more DLC characters are coming out soon. Uh, there have probably been some big tournaments, you know, Sonic Fox won one of them with Leo. Uh, there was just a big tournament last weekend where SQ won with Ramlethal, Justin Wong was playing Mei. And I would also say, you know, if you are kind of wondering what kind of character to play in this game, uh, I would honestly just, like, go to YouTube and, like, watch matches, go to Twitch, watch matches, and kind of see what characters just look cool. Even just based off their aesthetics. Like, honestly, for me, like, the number one thing is not even, like, before I get anything to do with gameplay or tier lists, I have to like how the character looks. So, like, I will literally, I will literally just go to the, uh, the character select screen and just like the first thing is the first thing that, that matters to me is just like what characters even look like they'd be up my alley like aesthetically.